Today's project is a little bit different. I did one similar to this a way back and it was with uh, four layers of to, to create a final scene. This one has four layers and it's a winter scene. I'll show you how to make this today step by step. This project will be cut from four layers of half inch thick red oak. Over thousands of hours of cutting on scroll saws, I've developed a rule of thumb for deciding what size scroll saw blade to use on any project. The main factors are the thickness of the wood, the hardness of the wood, and the complexity of the pattern. Those led me to choose a number five Pegasus modified geometry blade for this four layer scene. If you would like more information on that subject, I'll leave a link to my video covering it in depth on the screen and in the description. I'm starting with the back layer, which happens to be the easiest to make with only one interior and one exterior cut. I threaded the blade through the pilot hole, tightened the upper blade holder thumb screw, and started cutting the star. I cut from the pilot hole along one of the lines until I reached the point where that line met the next line. There are two ways to proceed from here, and I'm going to take the easier of the two. Rather than trying to make the turn for that acute angle at the point of the star, I stopped cutting at the point and backed the blade to the pilot hole. From there I pivoted the workpiece so the blade was at the beginning of the line on the other side of that angle, and I started cutting again. As soon as I reached the first point where it stopped at the tip of the angle, that cut was completed and the waste piece popped out. I now had lots of maneuvering room to take me back to the middle where I picked the next line to cut. I continued that process until the star was complete. With the star finished, I moved on to the exterior tree shape. This will be an easy shape to cut, but it will be important to make the shape as accurate as possible. This project has four layers, each of which is glued to another layer or layers. The outside outline is the same for all four layers, and they all need to be congruent. <laughs> Remember that term from high school geometry class? All the layers need to be cut accurately or else the outside edge won't be a smooth tree-shaped curve. The shape can be sanded into conformity after the glue up, but it's much better to have as close a fit as possible. Sending shapes like this to get them as perfect as possible can be a real pain. These patterns were produced on an inkjet printer and all the cut lines are therefore thin. This is a good thing and I plan to cut right on the lines. I have cut patterns with lines thicker than the blade is wide and these are harder, harder to follow exactly. You can drift from one side of the line to the other, producing considerable variation from one pattern to the next under those circumstances. By cutting right on the line, I ensure minimal differences between the layers. The next layer up is a house shape inside the tree shape outline. The details are all in the upper part because the next two layers will cover most of the bottom part of the house. There are no difficult shapes here. They are all mostly squares and triangles. Some even have rounded rather than sharp corners that make them even easier to cut. I started cutting at the bottom of the chimney and partway into that cut I could feel some increased vibration in the blade. I stopped cutting and retightened the blade in both the upper and lower blade holders. I mentioned cutting accuracy on the outside of the lowest level, but the only inside cut there was for the star. Beginning with this level, you have to pay attention to the inner cuts as well because some of them form the tree shape frame. The inside cuts there need to align as well, and they will be extremely difficult to stand when the levels are glued together. Accuracy always matters, but it's critical when parts are being cut that will later be glued together into some sort of final assembly. When I reached the windows, I started with the one on the far right that had 90 degree corners. These take some skill to make accurately. The way I do these is to cut from the pilot hole directly to one of the corners, not to one of the sides. When I reach the point of the corner, I stop cutting and back off the pressure slightly so the blade is running but no longer cutting. Now I pivot the workpiece 90 degrees until the blade is facing the direction I want to go next, and then I start pushing the blade into the wood to start cutting again. Then I cut to the next corner and repeat the procedure until the entire shape is cut. When a corner is rounded, not square, the procedure is easier. I don't need to stop at all. I simply follow the curve around the corner and along the line until I get to the starting point and the cut is complete. There was nothing unusual to show while cutting the rest of this layer, so I skipped to the end to show the two bottom layers against each other. You should already be able to get a feel for what the project will look like once the two top layers are added. I compared the outside edges and they match nicely, 
indicating I shouldn't need to do much sanding after the layers are glued together. The layer containing the snowman will go in front of the house. On the pattern, the cutouts for the mouth are somewhat irregular circles, but I decided to drill holes and leave them round rather than take the time to make six pile holes and then finish cutting the shapes. I don't think it makes much difference in the final look. The eyes needed to be enlarged a bit from the pilot holes, and there was a cutout for the snowman's nose, as well as one for an accent on his top hat. The next interior cut removes much material, so the house on the layer below this one can be seen when all the layers are glued together. You can easily see there's an inside line parallel to the outside line, forming a frame around the snowman. It will be important to cut this inside line of the frame accurately because the layer above it will have an identical frame and I want these to match as perfectly as possible. With three of the four layers completed, the project is coming together nicely. It looks like the outside edges are aligning well and I shouldn't have to do a lot of sanding. Heck, your cutting will pay off. The top layer features a boy and his dog. There are only a few cuts to make before the large inside cut that opens up the pattern to display the layers underneath. The fourth layer is complete, and when I put them all together, it looks like the alignment is excellent. The layers are each one half inch thick, and there is therefore a lot of depth to this scene. It's time for a little sanding, and then the glue up. I'm going to perform the glue up one layer at a time, starting with the third layer being attached to the back layer. There was a tiny bit of tear out on the back of the layer with the house, so I used some 120 grit sandpaper by hand to remove those before I glued those pieces together. I squeezed out a bead of glue onto the back of the layer where I knew it would come into contact with the back layer. I did not want glue on the entire piece because I want finish to adhere to any open surfaces when I spray them after the glue up is complete. Since this white glue is water soluble, I used my fingertip to spread it evenly. With the sides aligned, the bottom is off slightly, but that was okay. It will be a lot easier to sand the bottom flat than it would be to get the curves of the sides to fit if they were off. A good way to secure this was to clamp the bottom of the project using one of the wooden vices attached to my workbench. Once the bottom was secure, I added an F-clamp to the top and another to one of the sides to keep pressure on the two pieces while the glue dried. I put another F-clamp on the other side of this tree shape off camera. With the glue dry on the bottom two layers, I was ready to add the next layer. There's a reason for not putting all the layers together at once. When you first add glue to a piece of wood, the glue is quite slippery. And when you put two surfaces together, they want to slide around and not stay aligned. This tendency is minimized when you only have two surfaces. Add a third and it quickly becomes a frustrating process to align and clamp them. The bottom two layers are dry and can't move anymore, so I can now add the third layer to the top. I squeezed a bead of glue around the perimeter and I added glue on areas where I know the layers would touch in the middle. Once again, I did my best to avoid getting glue on any surfaces that would need to finish when I was done. I clamped the bottom in the vise and used F-clamps in enough places on the perimeter to ensure good clamping pressure would be distributed evenly. You know the drill by now. I spread glue on the appropriate places on the bottom of the top layer, aligned it with the sides of the layer below, then secured the bottom in the vise. Then I placed F-clamps around the perimeter. After the glue dried, I finished this project with several coats of Minwax Warm Set and Spray Polyurethane. A spray finish was the only practical way to complete this item. The thing I like most about the scene is its depth, due to being made from four one half inch thick pieces of red oak. I'd love to read your comments, and I will reply to every one. A like would be much appreciated, as it helps YouTube know it should recommend this video to others. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so, and click the bell so you're notified every time I release a new video. But you don't have to wait. A link to the next suggested video to watch is on the screen right now.